Hello, welcome back. It's Freddie in the shed and I'm up in the shack, but something a little bit different today. Ansel have sent in for test this BST200 battery analyzer. I've not heard of Ansel before until they contacted me for this review, but looking on their website, they do an absolute whole host of automotive testing products, right from a simple thing like this battery analyzer all the way up to professional shop gear. Now, battery analyzer is not something that I've owned before, but it's something I thought about owning, and this could literally pay for itself more than double in one go. Let me just tell you about my own personal experience whilst I crack this open. I bought a used car many years ago. Had it a few weeks, no problem. I didn't use it all the time. I was working up London at the time and I was getting the train to work, so just evening use. And then the car wouldn't start. I would charge up the battery, it would run for another two or three days, and then again it was, wouldn't start. Very slow to crank over. So I just assumed that the battery had become old and tired, although it didn't look particularly old, the battery. So I replaced the battery like you would. And guess what? After about two or three days, the same problem again. The car refused to start. So in the end, I run my car into the shop and thankfully it wasn't a very big repair bill. It obviously had a drain, a short if you like, and they traced it, funny enough, to a small incandescent light bulb that was in the engine compartment under the hood, you might say, um, which should have only been illuminated when the bonnet or the hood was open, but my one, the switch, had shorted and it was on all the time, and that's all it was. And the battery that I'd thrown away and replaced, probably at a cost of about £80 in today's money, the battery was absolutely fine. It had years of life in it, but there was no way I knew that. There was no way I could test it. So I paid twice, if you like. I didn't need to buy a new battery. Had I had something like this, I could have tested it and then just taken it straight to the shop, knowing that the battery was good. So yeah, I do believe these are important. I have looked at them before and I do think they can pay for themselves. Of course, it's not just automotive nowadays. You, maybe you've got a caravan and you've got a couple of batteries in that that you would like to test to keep an eye on. DXing, guys on the radio, you go up on the hillsides and you take a 12 volt battery. Now this analyzer will test the traditional lead acid plate batteries. Also it says AGM batteries. I'm not sure what an AGM battery is. If you know, perhaps just let me know in the comments because I'd be interested to know what they are. And it also tests the more modern lightweight gel batteries. And I know those gel batteries aren't cheap, but I also all know that some of you guys do use those when you go DXing. So a cheap analyzer, just in your toolkit, can just check the condition and the charge of your battery and perhaps give you a heads up if your battery is gonna need replacing in the future. In the packaging, it's nice to see a full printed black and white instruction guide. It goes into some very, very good safety advice at the beginning if you're a little bit unsure or nervous about attaching things to a car battery. It's all there. There's the instructions themselves. Yeah, it's very, very simple. Very simple, there's some screenshots to show you what the settings that you have to do. Now, there are a couple of settings that you have to make. There is some information that you need to find out about your car battery. We'll have a look at that in a moment when we go outside. But there's one thing I've just noticed just by looking at this. The screenshot on the front here, which shows the device, um, seems to show a data stream, which this information looks like it may have been taken from an OBD fault code reader, and it looks like a live stream. I, I don't imagine that uh, we're gonna get any map sensoring through um, this device, just connecting it to a 12 volt battery. So a little bit odd, I think they've just incorporated the wrong graphic there when they did the uh, the layup design. I, I, someone's made a bit of a botch there, but I'm surprised that's got through right to the point of production with the wrong display. It doesn't matter, it's not gonna change anything how the unit works, it's um, just yeah, a little bit how you're doing. But anyway, let's take this outside. Let's connect this up to the first battery. Let's have a look at the settings that we need to put into this. And then let's test the battery and see how we get on. And then we'll move on to the next one. This is the first battery that we're going to test. It's a diesel car, which means it's quite a powerful battery, but it is my daily drive, which means the battery is charged up every day. It's about 18 months old, so it should be very strong. I'm not thinking there's any problems with this battery. There are only two wires to connect, uh, red for the positive, black for the neutral, so it's very straightforward. 
go straight to the battery terminals um, it's better than attaching them to the leads and then straight away hopefully you can see that the unit activates right let's start this test so the first thing I say is the voltage on the battery there so we've then pressed enter next we're going to choose battery test sorry if it's a bit windy by the way then we have to tell the device whether the battery is in the vehicle or out of the vehicle so in our case we are in the vehicle next option is what type of battery we have the choices are regular which is lead acid plate batteries the AGM battery which I don't know what that is and then the more modern lightweight gel batteries so we're testing a regular battery the next option is where we have to tell the battery tester how powerful the battery is on the car there's eight different standards there I think that covers the whole of the world the most common one is CCA that stands for cold cranked amps and that normally is the large number that you'll find on a sticker on the top of your battery if you're unsure then I would suggest that you make a note of the make and the model number of your battery go in on your phone or computer google it google it and then from there you should be able to see the details on your battery and somewhere you'll see where it says cold crank amps this one in particular is not a bit hard to see but I've noted that it's 600 cold crank amps so I've entered that into the display once we've entered that <coughs> we can carry on with the test and now the battery is being tested and there we go straight away at the top it says that it's a good battery I'll do a screenshot on this so you can read it a bit clearer so looking at the screen now so just below the good battery report there we've got the voltage which is a healthy 12.70 volts then you've got the measured cold crank amps and this is going to be slightly lower than the maximum rated because the battery is well 18 months old so we're looking at 581 which is very very healthy and then you've got the rated 600 cold crank amps Moving on to page two of the analysis screen here. Top one is I think the most important factor, that's SOH, that's state of health of the battery. Now mine's showing 81%, I think that's pretty good. I mean this battery is getting on for two years old now, so it's not gonna be 100%, but again, that is where you're gonna find out the condition of your battery and it'll just give you a heads up to let you know how your battery is doing next below that is soc that is state of charge a good test for an alternator on a car mine is showing a hundred percent so my battery is fully topped up so i know my alternator is working and then below that is something called res i'm not quite sure what that was i couldn't see that in the instructions so i'm not able to tell you what that 5.38 reads okay so this battery tests out good it's in good state of health I knew it would be because it's fairly recent let's move on to an older battery that isn't used so much and then we'll see what results we get from that I'm well, quite fortunate I have two cars this is my summer car slightly older car it's not used in the winter months so I have a battery conditioner to try and save the battery now car batteries they like to be worked they like to discharge and be consistently charged if you're using a battery very little perhaps a leisure battery something like that you already know this they don't last as long now normally you get three to five years guarantee on a battery if you read the small print when you buy a battery I'll notice if you're using it as a leisure battery your guarantee time is less so they don't last as long so this battery we have here this Varta battery is getting on a bit now I've worked it out this one is about six years old and it sits all winter it just sits in this car it doesn't get used so uh, it's a more powerful battery than the TDI battery but I do think this one is going to be a lot more worn but let's put a battery tester on it and see what we get here we go we connect it up straight away we're getting 12.78 volts which is quite healthy but it has been on the battery conditioner moving on next we're going for a battery test and we are in the vehicle it's a regular lead acid battery now we come to the cold crank amps now this one is a larger battery it's more powerful this has uh, 780 cold crank amps so I need to increase this to get a proper reading there we go 780 and then enter to do the testing 
okay well this one's actually tested okay so good battery 12.78 volts measured cold crank amps 729 rated at 780 so that battery conditioner is working because i say this isn't a new battery anymore and then on page two there condition of health of the battery 78 percent that's absolutely fine condition of charge is 100 percent thanks to the battery conditioner and then this reserve or whatever that is it's slightly lower 4.32 not sure what it is so i'm quite pleased with that i wasn't quite sure how that one would test out so it's telling me there's plenty of life in that battery now i've got one more battery that i want to test i do have a very used battery pulled from a car waiting to go to the recycle center so we're going to pull that one out there and let's give that one a test this battery the next one we want to test this is a little ford battery this was on our fiesta now our fiesta did go in for a service a while back and they come back and they said they tested the battery and it was testing weak we should think about replacing it and sure enough about five months after that the car was struggling to start so i did replace it i put a battery analyzer on this battery it said it needed a recharge which makes sense so what i'm going to do is i'm going to recharge it fully fully charge it and then we'll come back when it's fully charged and then we'll put the tester on it. And there we go, that's shot right over to over five amps. Right, so I'm gonna go and do a bit of shopping, come back and then we'll give that one a test. Back from my shopping trip, disconnected the battery charger and I've put on the tester and I'm hoping you can see that. And straight away, this battery has measured 11.5 volts. So it's already showing quite a low reading. Let's move along with the test. The results are a little bit different with this one. I've tested this battery twice. The first time I put the tester on, it said charge retest, and that's exactly what we're getting debt now. Now what that means, if you get that twice, it means the battery hasn't reached a full charge, possibly a duff cell, something like that. If you get that warning twice after you've fully charged the battery, then the advice is to replace the battery. Below that is the measured cold crank amps, and this is really showing up how bad this battery is. We're only getting 104 cold crank amps from a, pot, a maximum of 390. Moving on to the second page, and yeah, here it is, look. SOH, the state of health, just 23%, and that pans out to how the battery was performing on the car. State of charge, zero. So it hasn't accepted the full amount of charge so it's all declining all the way and the resistance i'm pretty sure this is the resistance through the battery 28.67 so a lot higher a lot higher i think what that is thinking about it i think that's as the battery degrades you get uh, corrosion on the plates and that is a measure of the resistance i'm just guessing that because it's not in the instructions but as that gets higher i think there's more resistance through the battery so no real surprises this battery was tested at the Ford garage and they told us it was failing and yeah it's completely failed so that's done really really well that's tested now if, if we hadn't removed this from the car and the car just was refusing to start we would be able to establish that it is the battery that's at fault before we then start running other tests and get involved in garage bills things like that so an easy fix new battery which is what I did fitted a new battery job done and there we go it's a handy little testing tool to have at your disposal even if you're not suffering battery problems and maybe you've just got a ledger battery or just want to check your car battery that state of health reading is quite good gives you an idea of what's coming up in the future as far as battery failure goes I'll leave links buying links in the description um, I'm not on any commission here they, they sent this in free of charge for me to test but this is not a paid video I don't get paid for making the video I don't get any commission from future sales anything like that what I'll do um, I'll be a little bit cheeky when I email them to tell them the video's done I'll see if I can get a Fred in the shed discount code for you viewers they, they might do oh, it's my first video with them and normally I have to do a few videos before they grant me a code but I'll see if they'll take a little bit off if they do I'll leave that code number there also in the description if you add that at the checkout that's how it normally works hopefully you might get a little bit more off but it's not expensive right gonna bring this one to a close uh, i'm a very small channel i do appreciate your view time thanks for sticking with it there's the old thumbs up from fred give it back to me 
down below. I like to see that. But as for now, as always, please, please, please stay safe. Look after yourselves. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.